My opinion, it is courage. Amen. Courage. Boldness. The ability to deal or face anything recognized as dangerous or difficult or painful. And uh, to recognize it, to face it, instead of withdrawing from it. Some things that, that we see that we know that there's a price to be paid if you get involved. Many times people tend to skirt those issues or stay away from those things. For my colleagues who do this, I... I call them play it safe preachers. I think they all should be taken out into the backyard and shot. If anyone should speak the truth, the preacher should. God didn't call the preacher to just dress up and drive a big car and um, earn a living showing up on Sunday after having been on the golf course all week and give a sermonette that he or she got at the stoplight that deals with nothing. The preacher is called to be in the thick of things. For the preacher is God's mouthpiece. Amen. Every king in the Old Testament had a priest or a prophet. Someone who would whisper in their ear, thus saith the Lord. And in this time, day and time, the preacher who would dare speak for the Lord, there are powerful forces in place to try and silence that minister. So we need to be anointed to be courageous and to be bold. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, Verse 6, verse 9, and verse 18 says, Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers. Also, you find in verse 9, he says, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. In the 18th verse it says, whosoever he be, oh, uh, King James Version, whosoever he be that rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken unto thy words and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 says, Only be strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe and do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left. Notice, and he says, that thou may prosper whithersoever thou goest. Prosper there literally means that you will know how to behave that you will know how to handle yourself. Prosper literally means to behave wisely. 
We get our morals. We get our ethics. Amen. We get uh, our mores as believers from the Bible. People have said to me in arguing for LGBTQ, ABC, uh, however, <laughs> rights. Well, what if people are born that way? Which there's overwhelming scientific evidence that no one is. There is no such thing as a homosexual gene. It doesn't exist. It was made up. What was funny was when the, when the truth was revealed in the newspapers where the gene was found not to exist, the headline says, gay gene discovered. Yet you'd have to read the story to know that there was no gene. But I said that even if that were the case, as believers, we do not get our morality from biology. We get our morality from the word of God. If morality is a result of biology, then we cannot arrest the sociopath. We cannot put in jail those who have the ability to be serial killers and they can kill people and feel nothing. You scream and cry saying, please do not take my life. And they feel nothing. We wouldn't allow them to argue in a court of law and have a, a jury to find them not guilty if their argument was, I was born this way. Mm -mm. We're told to be very courageous to keep the word before us. We're told to be very courageous to say what God said. We're told to be very courageous to stand on the Lord's side. The words of King Hezekiah come to mind as he was preparing to do war with Sennacherib, king of the Assyrians and of Assyria. And by the way, Hezekiah won that battle. But in 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 7 and 8, you find these words. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than be with him. This is what the king was saying to uh, the people of, uh, of Judah as they were surrounded by Sennacherib, and it appeared that all hope was lost. The king said, be very courageous. Be strong, for there are more on our side than are against us. Then he said this about Sennacherib. I see his army. I see his chariots. I see uh, his war chest, he says. But with him is the arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. After Hezekiah spoke the word and reminded them that the God of the Bible was on their side, the Bible said the people rested themselves. That is, they leaned on, they rested in, they took hold of, they were established in the words of Hezekiah. If you go on and read it, it's a marvelous chapter. You'll read why Sennacherib sent his, uh, his, uh, his uh, uh, convoy, his, uh, his spokesperson. He sent his man out to tell them, don't let Hezekiah, his envoy, don't let Hezekiah uh, fool you. Don't let him talk you into standing up against us. Hezekiah's words are not so. Other nations have stood against us, and they fail, and your God won't be able to do, uh, d deliver you either. God didn't move. He sent one angel and wiped out the entire army. What a mighty God we serve. I just want to remind you, because when the enemy comes to challenges, we're going to push back. Are you with me today? Amen. 
Why is courage so important? Why spend so much time on this? Why preach today about an anointing for boldness? Well, one of the reasons is, is that the devil is doing everything he can to try and demonize and silence the church. America was at one time a place where voices could be heard. Ideas could be heard. Ideas on the right and on the left. Ideas that you agree with. Speech that you liked and speech that you didn't like. That's what free speech is all about. And yet we live in a day now where uh, people try to suppress, especially on the left, they try to silence the speech that they do not agree with. Many times on college campuses today, a multitude of conservative speakers have been disinvited or shouted down. I remember when uh, a, uh, the, uh, Jesse Hems, I think it was a, a and T. I I think it was a and T. it could have been Central, but he was invited to speak on the campus. Now, I'm not a Jesse Helm apologist, but when he went there, the people, the students, shouted him down. He never got a chance to say what he had to say. How do you know you disagree with the thing until you hear it? The Bible says a fool answers a matter before he's heard it. You never get strong when you refuse to even hear the other side. One of the things that disturb me about our beautiful people is that many times an African-American, uh, his card is uh, called into question. Our blackness is called into question if we think a certain way. The assumption is that we all vote a certain way, that we all think a certain way. The assumption is that uh, African Americans are going to be Democrats and that's it. Oh my. And I personally don't think it's good for any people to be 100% anything. Amen. Because again, I've said it, I've said it once, I've said it again. You have no power when you vote 90%, 20, uh, 90%, 95%, 80% one way, 90% of the time. You have no political power. For the party that gets your vote will take it for granted. And the other party who never gets your vote will seldom seek it. So therefore, we're left out in the dark. The devil wants to silence speech. College campuses now, they have safe zones. Isn't it amazing? How are we going to get these? Uh, how are we going to get these kids ready to uh, for the real world? Because in the real world, there are no safe zones. Mm -mm. In the real world, people are going to say things that you don't like. In the real world, people are going to challenge your ideology. They're going to challenge what you believe. And we've got to be ready to stand against the challenges. They want to silence us or at least to cause us to be indifferent. Nothing, few things are as bad as indifference. And I'm going to preach in just a minute. Someone wrote this, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. The opposite of faith is not heresy, it's indifference. The opposite of art is not ugliness. It's indifference. Indifference is showing no interest. Indifference is a lack of concern. Indifference is apathy. I am moved by the indifference of the clergy when it deals with uh, subjects that really matter. If a African-American is shot by the police, whether, before we wait to see whether or not it is even lawful, we're in the streets. We're arguing. But we're totally indifferent to the 1,876 black babies that are aborted 
in this country every day. Oh, and by the way, they have broken no laws. They have stolen from no one. They're innocent. We're indifferent. I'm moved by the indifference of the clergy and of many Christians at the 4,000 abortions that take place every day in this country. And saints, there is nothing as sinister. You know, the Bible speaks against inventors of evil things. Well, no, I can't think of a thing that is more evil than partial birth abortion. When the baby is pulled from its mother's womb, the head is left in the birth canal. An instrument is placed in the birth canal to hit the baby in the back of the head, thus killing the unborn child. Then another suction instrument is placed in the womb of the mother, and it sucks out the brain, and the blood, oh, it's ugly. And then the baby is pulled out. And that is the process of partial birth abortion. These are low estimates, estimations. In the, in the 90s, it was estimated that between three and 5,000 partial birth abortions take place in our country. This was in 97. Per year. That is approximately, if it's 3,000, that's 8 to 9 per day. If it's 5,000, that's 13 to 14 per day. And the thing that gets me is I, I wonder where is the outrage? Where, where are those whom Proverbs 31 and 8 speaks of those who uh, speak for those who have no voice and who are headed for destruction. If there has ever been a time that the church has got to cause its voice to be heard, the time is now. Last little thing I want to tell you about indifference and God's going to anoint us to be bold today. One man wrote this. He said, indifference is the strongest force in the universe. And the reason he said that is because indifference makes everything it touches meaningless. Love and hate don't stand a chance because you feel nothing. Well, Pastor, I mean, you're not bothering me. I think we'll all just leave, live and let live and just leave people alone. Indifference. It's not my business. Who am I to judge? Who am I? While people are being slaughtered, marriage is being redefined. Signs that distinguish between male and female. People are trying to pass laws to take those things away which our over 16,000 convicted or registered pedophiles, these are just the ones we've caught, would have a field day. If laws like HB2 fail, these, these sex offenders who have, you, you see, uh, maybe uh, Dr. Uh, uh, our, our resident uh, Christian psych psychiatrist, maybe one Sunday I'll, I'll put you up to talk about the compulsion that is in the sex offender, the pedophile, the urge, the rage, the drive to have somebody's child. I mean, they love children, all right. Love children. But they love them in all of the evil ways. This is why it is true that God is love. But all love is not of God. Right. 
And uh, what people tell me is, stay out of politics. Stick to preaching. My response is, preach what? Mary had a little lamb. Preach what? Let my topic be meaningless things as society degenerates before our eyes? No, the Lord is calling us to get involved. The Lord is calling us to say something. If the saints speak up, a difference will be made. Can I get a witness? One of the, praise the Lord, tools that Satan is using to silence the believer is ridicule. And I want to talk to you for a few minutes now. You got to hear me. I'm going to preach in just a moment because you need to know that in the church world, pastors who are watching, you need to know that your members view your silence as an endorsement. What you do not speak against, they assume you are for. So if a politician says, right off the bat, I'm for marriage equality, that is, redefining marriage. I'm for uh, abortion, the, the, the woman's right to choose, all the way up to the water break, all the way up, uh, up to it's time to give birth. And if you say nothing, which, let me tell you my problem is. Let me get off, my, get off my text for a minute. My problem is, if you are for something that heinous, I can't hear anything else that you're for. Because everything else to me is blah, 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 what? Blah, blah, blah. Because that's evil. That's evil. And when I stand before the God of the Bible, I don't want blood on my hands. And by the way, by the way, if there's somebody in this audience who have gone through an abortion, if you have confessed your sins, I say this all the time, the Lord has forgiven you. Don't you sit there and feel guilty. We're not talking to you. You can't change your past. All of us are forgiven for something. All, the Lord has brought us all out. But you got to help us save the next child. So if I appear not to care or to be insensitive, it's not that. We need you. And you don't have to stand up and tell anybody your business and all that. That's not required. What gets people saved is Jesus' business. <laughs> the gospel. But the enemy wants to use ridicule. If you get, and I recommend everyone gets it, Saul Alinsky's books, book, Rules for Radicals. Saul Alinsky, it was the devil if ever been one. Um, in his book, Rules for Radicals, Saul actually, in his dedication page, gives a dedication to Lucifer. He gives an over-the-shoulder over the nod to the first rebel who was so good at it, these are Saul's words, not mine, that he won himself a kingdom. Lucifer. So when you read uh, Rules for Radicals, you, you're reading from the mind of Lucifer himself. And one of the things that Lucifer said was, in uh, rule number five, he said, ridicule. Ridicule is man's most potent weapon. There is no defense. It's irrational. It's infuriating. You make, you make people mad, you infuriate them. It also works as a key pressure point to force the enemy into concessions. Let me tell you something. To stand for the God of the Bible, you cannot be afraid to be labeled, nor laughed at, nor talked about. Let me tell you something about labels. The very word Christian, when first used in the Bible, was used as a pejorative. When the believers were first called Christians, it was meant as a slur and as a put down. You know what they did? They embraced it. 
Now we all, those of us who are born again, are proud today to be called Christians. You know, sometimes they label us. They laugh us to scorn. They call us xenophobes, homophobic, judgmental. And you know, most people, most people don't want to be labeled as something. So, uh, um, Islamophobic, praise the Lord. So, we just, we, just, we, just, we just stay quiet. I don't want to say anything because I don't want anyone to look at me funny. And while we're quiet, the opposition is loud. The devil is talking. Oh, he's gaining ground. I, um, I, 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 I'll, I'll show you next time, it was mentioned today, the, just the unbiased coverage against HB2. I mean, it wasn't even close. Uh, like 90 plus percent of the coverage was against it. You would think that most of the people opposed the law when the overwhelming majority of North Carolinians support the law. Most, most North Carolinians believe that men should go to the men's room. Now, you have to admit it's weird that this is where we are, that you got to argue that one, that women should go to the women's room. But what is, what is, what is causing the indifference is nobody wants to be insulted or embarrassed. But remember this, Proverbs 15 uh, and verse 33 says, the very last clause says, before honor is humility. As a matter of fact, you find that in Proverbs 15, the last clause, and also in Proverbs 18, uh, verse 12, the last clause, before honor is humility. 15 and 33, before honor is humility. Um, condescension, humility. Condescension, the ability to be regarded as lower. So you've got to be willing to be regarded as lower for the Lord's cause. For the Lord to raise you up. See, I, I'm, I'm not trying to win the respect of the devil's crowd. See, this is where you have to get to. It doesn't matter. Let them say what they will. Let them regard me as stupid. Let them regard me as someone who clings to my gun and my religion with antipathy for others all they want. But I know what the Bible says. And, and you have to be proud. See, let me tell you something. If everyone else is coming out of the closet, saints, we've got to come out of the closet. Amen. And say what needs to be said. Experience this message in its entirety by calling toll-free 877-877. 463-3477 to purchase your copy in CD or DVD format. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day.